Debbie shared about this, this baptism that we receive is, it's like a down payment. It doesn't guarantee necessarily, but it certainly gets the ball rolling. I was just thinking in, in listening to her story and what a blessing it is that, that so much of her experience to be able to hear her speak of that because I was baptized on actually Valentine's Day and I don't remember anything about it. Amen? Okay, if I say amen, you respond like you believe it. Amen? Much better. Now, my mom and dad said it was a great event and why wouldn't it be, huh? It's their boy. And yet there has to be something. And when she said that, that how do you activate that? What is it that activates that, this meeting him? Where he becomes real for us. He doesn't just become a God. Rather, he becomes my God. And in that, no matter what your story is, no matter how many times you've been here, no matter how many times you've given yourself to the Lord, the Lord wants to continue to work powerfully in our life. But I think all too often we put him in this little box and we don't let God be who he wants to be for us. Amen? I think, unfortunately, oftentimes we live in a grace that's many, many years old. It's like God did this 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but God wants to do something new in us now. Amen? Amen. Tonight. Let's not wait till tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow's a new day. Tonight. This fall I had uh, just this profound, profound experience of God. And it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Now I've been traveling. And I got back Wednesday afternoon. And I live in a friary with five friars. Whom I love most of the time. <laughs> and while they have many gifts, cooking is not one of them. So I became very aware that as I got home on, on Wednesday, if we were going to have a Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday, I was going to cook it. So we have a kitchen with one oven. Cooking Thanksgiving dinner, of which nothing had been purchased yet. <laughs> so it's Wednesday evening, the day before Thanksgiving, those of you who are now are like sensing this anxiety, you understand what I'm getting into, amen? And those of you who don't, thank the person who does. Because that turkey just doesn't show up, amen? Amen. So I go to the grocery store and I'm anxious and I'm nervous and I'm tense because I've got to buy everything and I'm not even positive there's going to be a turkey there. So I go in there and I start, and I'm just trying to think through my mind, okay, what do I need to buy? And I need to get this, I need to get that. And all of this is going through my mind. And I also realize since we only have one oven that I need to cook the desserts that night. So I need to get everything together, get back home, have evening prayer, and then begin making desserts. So all of this is going through my mind. And just a little bit frustration that this could have been done earlier, but it wasn't. <laughs> because they figured the meal was just going to show up. Huh? <laughs> and you're looking at it, huh? So I'm walking in the grocery store, and, and I'm in this one area, and this woman walks by, and immediately when I saw her, my sense was that the Lord wanted me to speak to her. So it's like, all right, all right. So I just kind of waited for a second, just the movement of, all right, you need to just, I didn't know exactly what, just go up and speak to her. But then I just had a little conversation with the Lord, because clearly he doesn't understand what it's like to make Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Because he was a Jewish person and his mom did it for him. Amen? So, so amen. It doesn't just show up. That doesn't just happen. So I explained to the Lord, which he clearly didn't understand, all that I needed to do. So I just kind of put that sense back off to the bird and just said, you know, I just don't, I don't have time right now. There is a lot going on in my life. So, but I couldn't get this gal out of the back of my mind. And I went around a corner and she was there again. It's like, oh, this is killing me. So I made God a deal, which he's open to, all right? I said, okay, if I see her again by the jelly, uh, I'll, t I'll talk to her. I I'm willing to talk to her. So I go around this corner and wouldn't you know it, all right? There she is. I think she was like this stalker woman, all right? And what did I do? I just pushed my cart and kept on going. I just sense just a little bit of judgment. <laughs> so, so I go home that night, and, 
we have evening prayer and all this kind of thing, and, and the pies are in the oven, and, and our chapel is right next to the, to the kitchen. So I go, and I'm sitting down in the chapel. And this began to gnaw on me. I was sure that the Lord, I didn't know what the Lord wanted to do, but I was sure that the Lord wanted me to say something to her. And it just kind of began to gnaw on me. And then, I don't know if you, but, but my mind began to just kind of race and go out of control. And I realized that, that she's never going to go to heaven because I didn't speak to her. And this woman is going to go to hell. And she's going to burn in hell. And her children probably will to all because I wouldn't talk to her by the jelly. All right, so I'm having this major faith. And it's like, ah. But I really did. There was just this. And I go before the Lord. And I remember sitting in the chapel. And I just began to repent. And I said, Lord, I am so sorry. You don't understand. I am so sorry. And I just sat there, and there was just this deep sense of, of sorrow and sadness, and, and as if I had disappointed the Lord. And there was just this really, really beautiful experience of me repenting before the Lord. And saying, okay, I'll never do that again. And just this great image of, that I had of the Lord. I would play baseball a lot when I was a kid. And, and the Lord just kind of patted me back, on, patting me on my back and said, all right, get back in the game. Thank you. And I went and checked the pies, huh? <laughs> you see, the reason this had such a profound impact on me was because I've thought about Debbie's question, about what do I want it, my tombstone to say. And I'm okay if my tomb t tombstone says, uh, Father Dave Pavanka, uh, Dave said yes. Dave said yes. Because that's what I want. I want when the Lord asks me anything, that I'll say yes to it. And I think that's why that evening had such a profound impact, because the depths of my heart is that, and in that moment, I didn't say yes. I remember the first time I found myself praying and reflecting on this. I was a college student, and, and I was just praying, and I was sensing the Lord speaking me and inviting me to do something. And I remember just kind of wrestling with him a little bit, and I said, well, Lord, are you sure? Like, are you sure you want me to do this? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I said, but Why? All right, I asked the Lord, why? Why me? Why not somebody else? Why don't you let them do it there? Be much better equipped. Why do you want me? And the Lord said to me, because you'll say yes. That's not fair. <laughs> Seriously, what do you say after that? It's like, because you'll say yes. So it's like, yes. Yes. And it is my desire. I remember 25 years ago, the Lord saying, will you profess vows to be a friar? Yes. Will you say yes to being a priest? Yes. Will you tell people, people about me? Yes. Will you go to China? Yes. Will you pick up my cross? You know, I've been wanting to talk to you about that. <laughs> now, no, clear me. Clear me. I'm not saying no. I'm just kind of, why don't we talk about this? What exactly do you mean? I'm not saying no. Don't get, I'm not, I just want more information. <laughs> like, my cross, like, how much of it? For how long? <laughs> Are you willing to suffer? It's like, yes, I'm willing to suffer, sort of. But like, again, I'm not saying no. Let's just, what are our boundaries here, all right? <laughs> yes, 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 I'll pick it up. I won't like it. Will you love that person that drives you crazy? If by love you mean <laughs> put up with, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Will you forgive? If they grovel. <laughs> if they grovel. You see, the desire of my heart has been for a long time to be able to say yes to the Lord. Because when I think about the alternative, about saying no, when you take a look at the scriptures, and, and, and there's probably lots of them, but I was just praying, we have this, we, I mean, it's pretty simple. We have an option. We can say yes to the Lord or we can say no. And I just found myself reflecting and praying a little bit about the scriptures and the occasions and the times when people said no. And the first person that came to my mind was Jonah, all right? Jonah says, the Lord says, do this. And Jonah says, no. And what happens to Jonah? He gets swallowed by a fish, all right? 
So you've been warned, all right? Say no to the Lord, get swallowed by a fish. This is not too complicated. Or the rich young man in the 10th chapter of John. They were setting out on a journey and a man runs up and he kneels before Jesus and he asks him. This is cool because Jesus had been in this area, it's in Jericho, and he'd been there for a while. He's now beginning to leave, and the scripture says that he ran up to Jesus. He runs up to Jesus because Jesus is leaving town, and he wants to ask him a question before he leaves. So he runs up, and he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He goes through the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. He goes, I haven't done that, I haven't done that, I haven't, I haven't done any of these. This is going to be easier than I thought because I haven't done any of that. And Jesus says, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And at that statement, his face fell for he had many possessions. I find this one of the saddest scriptures. It may not be the only one, but it's the one that I think of where, where Jesus asks somebody very specifically for something and they say no. There is an intimate relation and a connection between our saying yes to the Lord and in inheriting the kingdom of God. I mean, this is such a sad story because he goes up to Jesus and I believe that he authentically wants to inherit the kingdom of God and he goes, this is what I want and I've lived a very righteous and wonderful holy life. And Jesus says, you're right, you've just lacked one thing. So will you do this? He says, no. No. I mean, I don't know what happened to him. But the only story we know for sure is that he says, okay, if you want to inherit eternal life, do this. And he says, no. And there's something important for us here. Guys, let's not ask the Lord a question if we're not willing to do what he asks of us. You know, so oftentimes we go before the Lord and we say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he tells us, and it's like, Lord, what else do you want me to do? <laughs> Let's not ask if we're not willing to do it. If we're not willing to say yes. And, and I think of my own story personally, why in, in the times that I haven't been or chosen not to say yes, what is it? I think oftentimes it's fear. It's a fear of what it's going to mean. It's a fear of what this is going to look like. It's a fear of failure. It's a fear of not being able to do it right. It's a fear of what people are going to say. But there's something oftentimes about fear that inhibits us from doing what the Lord is inviting us to do. And the deepest desire of my heart is to say yes to whatever the Lord wants because the reality is if I say no, God is not going to stop loving me, but he's going to go to somebody else and he's going to ask somebody who will say yes. And I don't want the Lord to have to go look anywhere else. And Pope Francis says that the Lord gazed on him, fixed his gaze, and the Lord fixed his gaze on me, the Lord fixes his gaze on you. And he invites us to say yes. But like the rich young man, it's often that thing which is very close to us. The thing which maybe causes fear, and I only wonder what goes through his heart when he says, I'm doing great, I'm doing great, and Jesus says, there's only one more thing, that's fantastic, what is it? Do this and fall, I can't do that. I can't do that. So we go before the Lord and we say, Lord, give me the grace and the strength to be able to say yes to you, to say yes to whatever it is that you ask of me. And as in the rich young man who wasn't able to respond to that and wasn't able to say yes, he walks away sad. Because in that, he ultimately says no to the thing that he wanted the most. And that was the ability to inherit eternal life. So we go before the Lord and we ask, what is it that we ask? And we looked in the scriptures and we see a couple of occasions, but we look to our lady. And we've got the beautiful image when the angel Gabriel comes to him comes to Our Lady in the beginning of Luke. The first thing the angel says is, is, Mary, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Oftentimes there's something that stirs in us when we, when we hear the Lord asking us or inviting us and it stirs and we find ourselves that we're frightened. And Mary wasn't frightened as if, as if she was afraid. Like she, she was just, it's what I call this holy fear. I remember the day that I was ordained. I was ordained actually 20 years ago in this room um, about two weeks ago. And I remember sitting in the chapel in the Holy Spirit Friary and just thinking about me being ordained a priest. And I was scared. Not because I didn't want to do it or not because it wasn't God wanted me to do because I knew that it was. But I was scared because I had no idea what I was getting into. But I knew that I had said yes. And I knew that the Lord was faithful. So in the midst of this fear, uh, sitting in the chapel at the Friary, I said yes to the Lord again. And I made this profound, honest prayer. And it was, yes, Lord, don't let me screw this up. That was from the depths of my heart. Because I know me. And I gave the Lord lots of reasons why he should probably choose somebody else. I said, Lord, why me? Oh, yes. Because you'll say yes. So Our Lady continues to say yes, and our yes echoes that yes. But what we have to ask each one of ourselves, and we have to be honest with ourselves and with the Lord, and that is, why is it that we're not able to say yes? What is it that stirs in us that causes us not to be able to say yes? Is it fear? Is it because it's not convenient? I think oftentimes, if we're honest, it's because it doesn't fit in with my plans. That, that, that Wednesday night in, 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 giant cha in giant grocery store, it did not fit into my plans to stop and to pray with that woman or talk to her or say anything because I had in my mind everything that needed to be done, and that wasn't a part of it. Which brings us to the place that is absolutely key for us to be able to say yes to the Lord. And that is surrender my will. Surrender what I want. Surrender how I want things to look, or how I want things done, or what I think is best, or how I think it should work. And allow the Lord's will be made known to me. I mean, isn't that what Jesus does in the last supper, in the Garden of Eden, of Gethsemane? He's there in Jesus, and, and, and Jesus, I love this because there's just something so honest about it. And he says, you know, if this cup could pass, that would be great. If there was any other way, that would be wonderful. And you have this beautiful, intimate, honest relation in this conversation between Jesus and his Father. But ultimately, he says, brothers and sisters, what each one of us has to be able to say if we're going to say yes to the Lord, and that is, not my will, but yours. Because I think if we're honest, honest, what we often are saying to the Lord is not necessarily, I want to say yes to you. Rather, I want you to say yes to me. Lord, I want you to say yes to what I want. Because this makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't you say yes to this? My mother, who's had, had MS for 45 years, and I prayed, Lord, heal her. Why wouldn't you heal her? Why, wh why wouldn't you heal Debbie's brother? Why wouldn't you do that? Say yes to my plans, and everything will be wonderful. But that's not what Jesus said. He said yes to his father. He said, yes, let it be done according to your will, not mine. And I think our ability to be able to say yes to the Lord, there has to be this part of us that we radically allow ourselves to be uh, just revealed and open to the Lord. And say, all of these things that I want you to do for me, I surrender them to you. Because as Debbie said, I believe in your promises. And I believe that you're bigger. And I believe that you're greater far greater than what I have. The Lord wants to be able to allow us and give us the grace to be able to say yes to him. But I often find myself saying, well, Lord, yeah, I'll say yes as long as you give me some sense. Sometimes when people come to confession to me, and this is good because when I talk about this, nobody comes. Uh, I, I ask them, I say, okay, here's your penance. Your penance is to say yes to the Lord. And they go, okay, well, like, what am I saying yes to? I said, that's just it. Well, I mean, if you tell me what I'm saying yes to, it doesn't work like that. Huh? <laughs> to be able to say yes without condition. Because so oftentimes I say, Lord, tell me whatever you want me to do, I'll say yes to. And then I realize that that's not what it's about. 
it's not saying yes to necessarily what God wants me to do. Rather, it's saying yes to him. It's saying yes to him. Dave, will you be in relationship with me? Yes. Will you let me love you? Yes. Will you love me? I'll try my best. Will you let me be merciful to you? Yes. Even when you failed for the hundredth time. Yes. Will you let me pour your, my love upon you? Yes. And the more times we say yes to that, and the more times we say yes to the love of God, and the more time we say yes to his mercy, something begins to change in us. Actually, we begin to change. And we become more like him. And my yes echoes and is united to this eternal perfect yes of Jesus to his Father. Will you let me call you? Will you let me love you? Will you let me be merciful? Will you let me be generous? Will you let me be kind? Yes, a million times yes. And in this, that it's not just, it's, it's not just my decision or it's not my strength that, that every time I say yes to the Father, every time I say yes to his love and his mercy, that, that we, you, I begin to be changed. And it's not just my yes, but it's Jesus's. And we're saying yes, not to necessarily what he wants us to do, rather we're saying yes to him. I mean, isn't that what happens when we come to the Eucharist and the, and the priest says the body of Christ, we say amen and we say yes. 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 I had an opportunity about three weeks ago. I was in Guadalupe. Uh, and just a wonderful blessing to be able to go on pilgrimage there. We were actually visiting a town in Puebla. And we're in this little church, and, and uh, I was just kind of taking some time by myself praying. And walking up in the middle of the, of the church was a young gal, maybe, I don't know, high school age, 15, 16 years old. And as soon as I saw her, she was walking with a sense of purpose, and she was just kind of walking straight up. And, and I heard the Lord say to me, uh, I want you to talk to her. So I explained to the Lord, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. He doesn't, I do not expect him to remember everything, all right? Or it says to me, I can handle this. But, it, but as she was walking up, just this, this sense of, A, the Lord wanting me to speak to her. And I had this image of her as a girl, and she was in her schoolyard, uh, and she was walking away, and all the kids were making fun of her. She walked in the front, and when she went over, and I wasn't actually sure if she had actually left, because there was a, another exit on the side of the church, so I said, okay, Lord. Okay, I don't know exactly how this can work, but I'll go talk to her. So I go up there, and as it turns out, she was still there. As was the interpreter standing right next to her. <laughs> like, okay, Lord, but if there's jelly here, I'm definitely, <laughs> definitely going to talk to her. It wasn't, it wasn't anything. So I went up to her, and, and, and through the interpreter, I just, I, what the Lord was saying to me was that, that he greatly, greatly delighted in her. And he loved her. And I just shared with her a little bit about um, her feeling not accepted because of her friends. And, and, and she began to have tears in her eyes. And her grandmother was actually there. And she came over, and, and myself and the interpreter and the grandma and this young girl, we sat there and we prayed. And I just told her and preached the Lord's love on her and told her about how the Lord delighted in her. And tears are running down her cheeks and her grandma's cheeks. And, and there's just this beautifully tender, intimate moment. Because we say yes, 
the Lord wants to be able to do great things first in my heart and in my yes, transforming me and changing me and making me more like Jesus. But our yes has profound impact on other people. And my and your ability to continually go before the Lord and say yes to him, say yes to the love, say yes to your inheritance, say yes to being a son, yes to being a daughter, yes to all that the Lord has for us. Uh, he does great things. Amen?